Hey what's up guys welcome to part 4 of the tessellation series in this video we are going to use the rotation method that we discussed in part 1 and we are going to apply that method on a square polygon so I am just going to go and create a new document using the same settings that we discussed in part 2 and part 3 for the reflection and the translation method so a 1200 by 1200 document side with 300 uh, dpi and uh, make color format maybe cmyk or rgb depending upon your requirement and then i'm just going to press create now again i'm going to create a square shape the size of the same that we discussed earlier 300 by 300 you can put the, the values in the transform in the width and the height fields and then you can just simply align it at the center by the way guys this method is a bit tricky and it requires a bit more concentration as compared to the previous two methods that I discussed so you might have to watch this part of this video maybe more than once to completely understand what is going on and how to set up your document to create that uh, pattern using this method okay guys so now we have a sphere shape and the size is 300 by 300 API now we want to label the sides and uh, actually before I label it I just, just simply convert it into a symbol so that we can easily you know, create copies of it so I'm just selected this rectangle shape or the square shape in the layers panel and in the symbols panel just press create to create a symbol close the symbols panel we do not need it anymore and uh, let's just label these so in this on the left hand side I'm going to use this artistic text tool not the text frame tool artistic text tool and I'm just going to label the top part let's say let's name it uh, maybe let's simply name it R and uh, let's just scale it up a bit and why I have not used A, B or something like that why I have used R and uh, let me just name this side here F so F the reason is that these R and F are not the letters which are kind of like a reflection so let me just uh, explain it a bit more so if I use A here you can see that if we divide this one into half from here in the middle you can see that the right side is kind of looks like a reflected side of the left side so same is the case with the letter E if we divide it into the center here from the center the top part looks like a reflection of the bottom part so we do not want to use those letters which looks like a reflection of the other side so these letters would uh, work best R and F we might need to uh, name the other sides too but let's just focus on these two sides so as discussed in this uh, first part of the video we said that we cut parts of the square from one side and instead of sliding it on the other side we rotate it on its existing side so if i just cut any part from this side this area it, instead of going down here on the opposite side we are going to rotate it and put it on this side here and the same case goes with this f side so in the previous two methods we discussed we cut parts from this side here and then move it on the opposite side but instead of doing that in this one we are going to rotate it and put it on this adjacent side here so keep that in mind so let me just bring the letters inside that symbol so that we can easily make copies of that now i'm just going to select that symbol here press ctrl j to copy it and now just look at this letter r it is supposed to be rotated and brought it on this side so which means that if we let me just put another R here so currently this R looks like that so another copy of the R when it is rotated here it should look like that on this side so how, how you might say why it is so, so let's just bring this R here at this point and let me choose this option from the top uh, this one enable transform origin and bring this circle or the target at this corner so we are going to rotate that side and bring it here on this one so you can clearly see that 
how the shape of arc looks once it is rotated so keep that in mind so we had copies of our symbol and now we simply need to rotate it and we have this button checked enable transform region that is very important to get that center target area that you can see here and we are going to bring it here at this location this corner and once it snaps we are going to leave it and then rotate our shape like that now you can see r is rotated in this direction we are going to go back to the center one this one the basic symbol press ctrl j to copy it and now we need to rotate this f side we need to bring it here downwards so we are going to use that center target area bring on this corner here and then bring it down like that you can see now we have you know two adjacent side of the main square but we need two more the upper part here and the left part here we need that so guys let me just put another two letters here let me choose this one or create a copy of this and let me name this side here let me just name it Q actually capital Q would be best here so Q and then I'm going to name the other side this bottom side let's just name it uh, let's use G okay now pay attention to the letter Q and the R here you can see that this small line at the bottom of the Q is pointing towards this vertical line of the R and the F horizontal the vertical line or the basic shape of F back side of the F is pointing towards the bottom of the G the same thing we need here on this one so which means that we need to place our symbol in such a way that we get the same kind of you can say that the location the same thing that we are getting here on this side we need to get the same thing which means that we need to place our symbol or the sphere shape on this side here so that we get the Q so currently the Q is looking like that we do not need it because you can see that this small line that is coming out of this Q area it is just pointing towards the R area like that so we mean that the Q should look like that on this area if we bring a sphere on this side the Q should be positioned in this way and in the same case if we bring uh, let's say G on this F side because we have G and F you know opposite to each other on this line so you can see that the back of the F is kind of like a bottom of the G so if I just bring make this letter to be G so the, our G should look like that so the bottom of the G should be on the back of the F the same way so whatever sphere we place here the G in that sphere should be pointing towards the back side of F so keep that in mind okay now I'm going to just uh, remove this line and select the center square this one the start one and press ctrl j to copy it and then I'm going to rotate it on this axis on this point or this region and I'm then just going to rotate it like that now you might say why I have put it here and not on the other side let me uh, tell you why so guys you can see that we have this G here and we can just simply slide it like that you know if we slide it here you can see that the bottom of the G is pointing towards the back of the F the same thing is here the bottom of the G is pointing towards the back of the F and the, this Q the, that small line in the Q is pointing towards the back of the R so that is why we needed this sphere here at this location by the way we can uh, we did not have to slide it we could have, could have just simply rotated it but that might have confused you and you can just simply slide it and uh, that would work fine too the same is the case with this one this uh, f and uh, r uh, small bottom one you can create a copy of this one and slide it here at this location and that would simply work fine but if you do not want it you can simply remove it and use that square that we created you know just simply select that create a copy of it and then bring this one this target area 
at this location at the top corner and then start rotating it like that and you'll get the same square shape the same this one is resembling it this one so it looks like same now just to recheck that you have placed your these elements of these uh, squares correctly just uh, look at the, uh, the one the basic one the start one so we have r f g and q and in adjacent to q the first square that we placed we have this small line pointing towards the back of the r so wherever that q has in in all these look squares the small line coming out of the q should always points point towards the back of the r and the same thing the g the bottom of the g should always point towards the back of the f so as you can see that here the back of the f and this is the bottom of the g so the bottom of the g is adjacent to the back of the f the line in the q is pointing towards the back of the r similarly on this one the line of the q is pointing towards the back of the r the bottom of the g is pointing towards the back of the f and you can now clearly see that we have now placed these squares perfectly now we do not need these letters anymore and we can just put them together in any symbol and hide them so guys if this part was confusing to you i would suggest that you watch this part of the video again to completely understand it and if you have any questions regarding this part or any other part of this video you can ask me in the comments below and i'll be happy to help you okay now guys we need to remove two sides of the basic square again we need to first convert it into curve so that we can remove the sides. we are going to use this white arrow tool or the no tool and now we can remove any of the points any of the corner points this does not matter which one so i'm just going to use this bottom one because it is easy for me to draw and create these shapes using the right hand so i'm just going to use this bottom one at the top i'm going to use this option break curve and then simply bring it inside and delete this line bring this line inside and simply delete it and now we have our basic center shape ready which we can easily manipulate you know just like that and then create our shape whatever we want okay now that our basic design is ready it is time for us to manipulate these two lines and create our shape the same way we did in the past two videos so i'm just going to create a point here maybe bring it up and point here let's just bring it i'm trying to create a fancy like a creature a creature a fictional kind of uh, character here and uh, you can create whatever you want depending upon what you uh, feel like so and i found that this method is very suitable for creating birds maybe fish or any kind of like characters that have four legs so maybe this is coming here and maybe take a leg at this point something like that bring it here and then maybe put it here give it another leg at this location this uh, seems fine and maybe bring this point here like that so I'm just going to manipulate these lines and try to create something interesting, trying to bring out something uh, you know look that looks good on our in our pattern. Okay guys, I'm pretty satisfied with this uh, shape and by the way, I forgot to uh, you know, label these corner points and um, you should have labeled these if you are confused about uh, you know, moving these corner points. So I have discussed that issue with the, in previous two videos. So make sure that you label these corner points for example, this one and this one and this one and uh, this one so that you do not move them accidentally so if you want to know how to do it uh, make sure that you watch those previous videos 
I should have done that before you know manipulating these lines but I actually forgot so just make sure that you do that okay now that I have these lines here now I can just simply make them smooth and uh, make them look more you can like and you know fluent instead of you looking like jagged lines so I'm just going to use uh, random points here just simply convert them into smooth lines and try to create a smooth character out of these lines So guys I'm pretty satisfied with how it looks and the next step is to extract that shape here from these lines so that we can create details in it and this process is the same as the previous ones we are going to select all of these symbols and then before I do that let me just delete these letters that we created we do not need them anymore so I'm just going to select all of the symbols go to the symbols tab and press detach and then I'm going to right click and simply ungroup all the next step is pretty simple we are going to remove the lines that we do not need so let me select this one yeah we do not need it let's just delete it select this one we do not need it as well select this line we do not need it as well and we are need going to need this half of these lines so I'm going to select this one these points press delete, select this point, press delete, select this line and delete the line at the points that we do not need to get that shape that we have here and then simply we are going to join these lines because we have now three different separate uh, lines we need to join them into a single shape so I'm going to select this bottom one and this one and join that corner point here and at the top I'm going to use this option join curves instead of close curves use the option join curves the same is the case with this line we are going to select that corner point and join curve and the last one the top one we are going to join that again alright now the next step is pretty simple we need to create details in our uh, shape and uh, that is going to consume most of your time because you need to make sure that it looks good so just uh, to make this tutorial short and for me to you know make it easy to edit I'm just going to skip that part and uh, see you after I have finished creating the details so guys I have just finished adding the details and I have finished with this result and I'm pretty satisfied with this one now I just need to fill rest of the document with uh, this shape so I'm just going to create the same sphere again the same 300 by 300 pixels now I'm just going to align it at the center remove any kind of fill color from it and then make that shape or the character a child of our sphere and by the way I have already created a kind of like a darker version of that character as well uh, just to create a sense, some kind of difference in our illustration or pattern so one of the sphere we have with this white one let me create a copy of this one and I want to put a darker version in the second sphere so make it a child of this one so we have a darker version and a lighter version I'm going to select the lighter version first convert it into a symbol and the darker version and then convert it into a symbol so that we can have two variations all right now what we need is to just simply select that shape that we have created and then rotate our objects or rotate our illustration as we did while you know, preparing this document so the first thing that you would remember 
is that if I just press Ctrl J, I rotated it and bring it here in this location. So I can do the same again. I'm going to use this transform origin option, Trans enable transform origin option, bring that target area at this corner, and then simply rotate it like that. Now, if I just bring these ones outside of our rectangle, this shape paper, you can see that they are quite similar to that, which we do not want. And that is why I have created a darker version because we can then rotate that darker version and replace these ones. So I'm going to select that darker version, again bring the target area here in this location and simply rotate it like that. And now when I bring this darker version outside our sphere shape, we can see that now it fits perfectly and make it kind of like look much better as compared to the previous one. Again, I'm just going to bring them inside it. The darker and the lighter versions. And uh, one more thing that we can do here is again rotate it and bring it down here, this darker version. So I'm going to select that and uh, make sure that we have this target area at the bottom here in this location and press Ctrl J to copy it and now place it here like that so that the lighter version is now being surrounded by the darker versions. Select that again, press Ctrl J, copy it and then let's say let's try to rotate it here and uh, you can always change the placement of the rotations and trying to figure out what uh, whether it works or not whether the darker version works at that point you know point or the lighter version works at point so the easiest way to figure it out when you have this lighter tile it should be surrounded with the darker tiles so that is the normal you would say that case here let me select this one again and let's get a copy of this one and then let's just maybe rotate it around this area and then rotate it like that and now when I re you know, bring these darker characters outside and then the lighter one outside as well you can see that now our lighter one is actually surrounded by uh, darker characters and now within these darker characters we need to put our lighter characters so I'm just going to bring it inside our sphere again. Select that lighter one that we created. Press Ctrl J to copy it. Select any of the corner points. Let me just select this corner point here and then simply rotate it like that. Then again, I'm going to select this bottom one. Press Ctrl J to copy it. Bring that target area at this corner and then simply rotate it in this location again select the basic one the simple one press ctrl j to copy it now i'm going to use this third corner here so you need to rotate each and every tile in the four corners that we have and bring it here then select the simple one again press ctrl j now it's time for this fourth corner the bottom right one and now i'm just going to rotate it around that point and now you can see that we are kind of getting which we wanted the same thing we are going to repeat again to fill the rest of the document for example i need to rotate this one to bring it upside here so i'm going to select this one press ctrl j to copy it and then make sure that the target here is at this point and then simply rotate it like that then again Select this one, we need to bring it here, press Ctrl J, copy it, bring the target at this location, then simply rotate it like that. Now you can see that that white area is actually now covered with dark one. Same thing we need to do with the rest of the white ones.
now let's just check if uh, we need to rotate these or we can simply copy the top tiles and place them down so i'm just going to bring that uh vector white character outside and then the darker one outside and see what we get so yeah our characters are perfectly filling these uh, areas that are outside and we can easily select the top row and bring it down and then simply we can select that top row of the dark and the lighter versions press ctrl z to copy them and instead of rotating we can just simply move 1200 points towards the y axis so i can really add 1200 in that y axis field as you can see here and press enter and it will now perfectly place it at the bottom corner of the bottom edge of our document now all i have to do is just simply bring that uh, shape outside of our rectangle bring the top one outside of our rectangle hide the rectangles we do not need to uh, see those rectangles and now we can you can see that our pattern is ready it has this kind of like a fancy kind of like a character that gives it uh, a unique look to our uh, pattern kind of like an interesting look now of course this is the kind of like a fictional character and uh, it looks strange but you can use birds or characters that are kind of like easy to recognize so you know it totally depends upon you how you see fit and i found that these kind of patterns look great on all of our print products so if you want to use uh, it you can use them on all of our print products and also as we have each and everything in the symbols we can easily change the colors of everything so guys that's how easily you can create a tessellation using the rotation method inside affinity designer now you can test that pattern out using the method that i showed in the part 2 when i created that pattern using the translation method so you can test that pattern out and hopefully guys we have found this video to be helpful now i do admit that this is a bit tricky video and it might be kind of uh, slightly difficult to understand but uh, you can watch that uh, this video again and hopefully your confusion will be removed and if you have any questions you can ask me in the comments below and i'll be happy to help you so guys hopefully i'll see you in the next video and thank you for watching